Today, I wanted to show you how to derive the radius of a black hole using only uh, Newtonian classical mechanics. So in classical mechanics, we define the force of gravity as Newton's constant capital G times mass 1, mass 2, over r squared. So for a picture, let's say you had a planet, mass m1, and you were standing on that planet and your mass m2, and the distance from the center of mass of mass one to the center of mass of mass two, oh, the distance from the center of mass of mass one to the center of mass of mass two is r, then this equation applies. Okay, so if you wanted to, let's say, leave Earth's gravitational field, we can do that using conservation of energy. So potential energy from gravity, we can get that by integrating the force of gravity along the r direction. So the integral of gm one and two over r squared dr equals negative g m1 m2 over r. Because the integral of one over r squared with respect to r is negative one over r. So this is the potential energy due to gravity. So let's say we want to leave surface of mass M1. Or of the planet or whatever surface you want to leave. If we look at conservation of energy, If we are on the surface of the planet, we would have some potential energy due to gravity. And if we want to leave the planet, we need some initial kinetic energy. And now the final picture. So initially, we're standing on the planet. And in the final picture, we're off in space and the planet is nowhere to be seen. So another way to think about this is we're now a radius r approaching infinity away from the planet. And so if you plugged g m1 and 2 over r, if you plugged in here, the limit as r approaches infinity, you would get one over infinity, which would just be zero. So we won't have any final energy, any final potential energy due to gravity. And let's say that we, we picked just enough velocity to get to um, infinitely far away. So we'll have no kinetic energy at the end either. OK, so now we have negative g m1 m2 over r plus 1 half m2 v squared equals 0. 
So this negative sign. So we'll add the GMMR to both sides. And now we're going to cancel out the masses. And we're solving for velocity because we wanted to know how much velocity we would need to escape the surface. So you would multiply by two and take the square root of both sides. And you would get this, which is your escape velocity. Okay. In the case of the Earth, M1 would be the mass of the Earth and R would be the radius of the Earth. So we've derived this escape velocity, which is let's call it big M over big R. And now the one part of this derivation that doesn't, that isn't classical, um, we know from Einstein that there is a maximum speed that something can go. And so that max speed is equal to C, which is the speed of light in a vacuum. So what if we replace our velocity with C? Okay, so let's, so there's two ways that we can go about this. Now let's say we knew the mass that we were standing on, let's say. So let's say we knew the mass, then if we wanted to solve for radius, we would get that radius, so we would square both sides and then cross multiply and we would get the radius is 2gm over c squared. And what we've just found is the radius of a black hole. And specifically, this is the Schwartz shield and I might misspell this, Schwartz yield radius. So that's a special black hole that isn't rotating and doesn't have charge. So it's the most basic black hole you can think of. And so basically what we've just done is if we replace our escape velocity with the speed of light, then any if we needed a speed greater than that to leave the surface of that object, then that object would have to be a black hole. So basically any ma anything that is more massive in a given radius, if you take this ratio and you get some number that's greater than the speed of light, then that object has to be a black hole. And so let's see, Let's do some examples. So this is our radius of a black hole. Let's say that we take M to be the mass of the Earth, which is approximately 5 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. Speed of light is three times 10 to the eight meters per second. And the gravitational constant is 6.67 .6 times 10 to the minus 11. And a bunch of units that I'm not gonna get into right now. But, uh, and so this mass of the earth is more like Five point nine seven. 
well, I'll just call it six. So if we wanted to find what the radius of the Earth would be if it was a black hole, we would plug in these numbers. So two times 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times five, I guess we called it six times 10 to the 24 over three times 10 to the eight squared. And if you plug that into your calculator, 0 0.00, .00 eight, nine meters. So if the earth suddenly turned into a black hole, it, or in order for the earth to suddenly turn into a black hole, it would have to shrink all of its mass down into uh, less than one centimeter. So it would be very, very small. And so the other thing that you could do is say you knew what the radius of your black hole is. Now, could you figure out the mass? So C squared to the other side. solving for the mass. And so let's say that we wanted to know the smallest amount of mass that a black hole would be if it was, say, the size of the Earth. So again, we can plug in our values, 3 times 10 to the 8 squared. The radius of the Earth is 6.8. 378 times 10 to the 6 squared, 2 times 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Nope, oh, and the radius is not squared here. So if you plug all that into your calculator, 4.3 times 10 to the 30 three kilograms. And so just to compare it, so we'll call this M black hole. The mass of the Earth is only 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. So the black hole is, if we did this ratio, mass of the black hole over mass of the Earth, we would get a ratio of about 10 to the 9. So the mass of the black hole is 10 to the nine times heavier than the mass of the Earth. So just to give you an idea of how dense a black hole is, if the black hole that you found had a radius of the Earth, it would be 10 to the nine times more massive than the Earth, but fitting within the same radius. And so that was just an example of using only classical mechanics and just a hint of special relativity. We were able to derive the equation for the radius of a black hole. And that radius that we derived agrees completely with the radius that you get if you derive uh, the, rate, the Schwarz field radius of a black hole using general relativity, which I think is very interesting. This has been a Dr. Strassbau lecture.
keep the credentials. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.